Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar and Q&A session with the founder of DuckSoup, Will van der Sanden, who will share his knowledge with us on LinkedIn Automation's hottest topics. The webinar is being hosted by Giles Garnett, the head of professional services, and live chat is monitored by me, Jen Kuzmanskaita, the head of customer service. Thank you for joining and let's start our webinar. Hello and uh, good morning and good afternoon or good evening to everyone joining to uh, today's webinar, wherever you may be in the world. And uh, hopefully you can all see me despite the sun being in my eyes. Um, today we have the opportunity to speak with the founder of DuckSoup, uh, Will van der Sanden. Thank you to Jin, who's our uh, head of customer support uh, for the introduction. And for anyone who's new to DuckSoup, my name is Giles and I'm the head of professional services. You'll hear me regularly if you uh, attend our webinar programme. Please be aware that, as always, the, the webinar today is being recorded and will be made available via the usual channels in the coming uh, days and hours. We've already had a couple of questions from our users, which we'll cover during the discussion today. Um, but if you have other relevant questions, please feel free to add them to the, uh, the question box. It's not the chat box, it's the question box, because that's GoTo webinar. Um, and we'll try and answer anything we haven't covered towards the end of the webinar. Now, if you're happy to ask your question actually uh, in real life, uh, rather than uh, just typing it in, please use the raise hand button so that Jin can identify you uh, as easily as possible. And hopefully we'll hear from a couple of you uh, during the course of the webinar. Of course, this is the first time we're trying this interactively like this, so please do bear with us if we have a few hiccups along the way. Um, now, the last time we had the pleasure of uh, Will's company was uh, on a webinar back in uh, December last year, and quite a lot has happened in the world of Duck Soup and lead generation since then. So it's gonna be great to hear from the founder of Duck Soup. So without further delay, uh, let me introduce Will van der Sanden and hopefully his camera will work as well. You never know. There we go. Yes, thanks Giles. Uh, I can't see my own camera, so I'm not sure if you can see me, but I'm assuming you can. We can't, we can't see you at the moment. We have a, a black screen, I think. Oh, there we go. You've just appeared. Excellent. Yeah? Okay. Cool. <laughs> there well, we go. Unfortunately, I can't see myself, so that's, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, thanks for uh, the intro, um, and well, let's see if we can get some uh, interaction going on this session. Um, uh, first off, oh, uh, let me just look at the year 2022 20, so far, uh, as in the, uh, the developments that we had at, uh, at DuckSoup this year, starting, uh, starting in sort of January we did our big launch of the uh, of the free 14-day uh, free turbo trial for all new users. And what's, what's really sort of special there is that it is a zero commitment uh, free trial. So anyone who installs the DuckSoup extension uh, for the first time will get uh, the, uh, the free trial of the full version of DuckSoup Turbo without any restrictions. Um, and yeah, we've had lots of really good feedback on that, and lots of people using the uh, the opportunity to uh, to test and uh, look at the product. Uh, we have also introduced the High Flyer Customer Success Program. Um, the program is for for those customers that yeah that have a number of seats or a, a particular type of uh, license. You can see the full details on our website. Uh, on the specific uh, page about the um, the high flyer program, but it's uh, uh, it's for our uh, yeah our, our customers who are with multiple seats. Uh, it provides a number of uh, free booster calls, so basically to make sure that they are uh, successful in the rollout of um, of Duck Soup and where we can help them, uh, we will. And it also includes priority support, meaning that if you do have a problem or a suggestion that uh, yeah, you will be uh, first in line to uh, to get answers. And we've had uh, and yeah, I, and, I can, and I can say from uh, from personal experience, yeah, we had quite a few uh, high flyer calls uh, helping there. With we we have both half hour and one hour calls there available to users, and they're they're used yeah for a number of reasons. A lot of it's consultation to make sure that things are running correctly, basically to give users reassurance. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. Right, it's to. Uh, uh, because obviously the, the the well there's a lot a lot to take in when you first start using duck soup also when you roll out duck soup for uh, uh, multiple seats uh, there are just a lot, number of things that people need to uh, pay attention to and yeah it just helps if we uh, 
if we are able to uh, look over the shoulder of the customer and uh, just make sure that they um, uh, yeah, make the right choices where they uh, are looking at these appointments. Yeah, uh, that's good to hear. Um, third here on the list uh, that yeah, and we had a work on and uh, they actually just released, I think only a month ago. Uh, we have two new APIs. Well, yeah, there's some other ones, but these are really the key ones. There's a signal API and a settings API. Now, these APIs are really targeted to, uh, again, larger uh, deployments where um, especially the uh, where the extension is running, usually uh, in the context of a particular sales, uh, sales development agent and the person controlling the lead generation with TuxSoup is basically working somewhere else. So it's because of that separation. Uh, so this, this API, these APIs enable uh, this particular deployment model. Um, so the signal API, what it allows the uh, customer to do is to uh, to control uh, the well the, the uh, actions that are happening inside the extension. And th so those are not the, the actions that are uh, geared towards LinkedIn. Uh, for that, we have the, the remote control uh, API that we now renamed to the LinkedIn activity API. But the signal API is really about uh, triggering uh, what otherwise would be uh, user interaction uh, uh, commands and then triggering those commands via the API. Um, and it's really uh, just to, uh, to further make it make the automation even broader uh, for those who are looking for that sort of uh, scenario. Then the settings API, uh, it, al it allows the, um, I guess, the the integration owner of the of the Docs deployment to uh, to set the the settings of of the configurations of the extension and also of the all the campaigns to set that using the API, meaning you don't have to ask the end user to go in and change the settings. Um, uh, the uh, the central control can just deploy the settings that that are required, so that the uh, the end user just needs to make sure that the extension is running. Um, and it's it's a two-way uh, yeah so two-way API you can read settings and write settings as long as you've got the right security keys of the uh, of the user that you're trying to uh, control well of that you're trying to control the settings of obviously uh, so that's <laughs> yeah. the uh, the new API um, LinkedIn Recruiter we we've always supported LinkedIn Recruiter Lite uh, and by always I mean for the past sort of five years at least. And as of this year, we also now have the LinkedIn Recruiter Pro that is included in the mix, which means that we now support um, yeah, all versions of, uh, of LinkedIn. So that's uh, regular LinkedIn, uh, Business Plus, Sales Navigator, and uh, Recruiter and Lite and Recruiter Pro. <laughs> um, we've had a new integration partner added to our um, uh, yeah, to our partner page, uh, Ansible. Ansible is an auto sales automation platform that uh, uh, um, uses well signals to the, to see what customers, what sort of behavior customers are uh, are showing, and then to uh, to reach out to those customers at at timely uh, moments. And they've enabled the uh, oh, sorry, the LinkedIn integration using the using our product. So that's uh, that's awesome. Um, Next up, the queued activity filters. <laughs> um, basically, as we, we saw that when people are creating more campaigns and um, yeah, there's just more and more activity being queued up in the in that in that particular uh, view on the dashboard. Uh, it was clear that well, it, it was difficult to see what what was going on uh, in which campaign, what, what what people were waiting for, and now we have. The ability to filter by campaign, to filter by uh, activity, and also filter by profile. And in doing so, you're able to get a much better view on uh, the activity that is being queued and in, in which context, and also allows you to more easily control, uh, i.e., at the moment, the remove queued activity that is no longer uh, relevant. Uh, now so I can. Also I can say from uh, from uh, calls I've had recently that uh, that's been a much imp uh, appreciated uh, feature enhancement there to to help uh, filter those uh, those queued queued activities and uh, helps to keep keep things under control. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, you know, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Um, and finally, uh, quite a bit of 
um, changes, basically some pretty major changes in the LinkedIn UI space throughout. Um, the regular the regular LinkedIn UI has changed quite drastically this uh, half year. Um, as people will probably have well definitely have seen, the Sales Navigator has also had a complete overhaul and the uh, recruiter as well. Um, and well, as you probably have noticed, uh, DuckSoup has uh, has made all the required changes to, um, to to keep supporting all those different versions of uh, of LinkedIn. Excellent. Well, thank you for that, uh, that very useful summary of where we are now to sort of get us up to date uh, from the last six months or so. Um, so, do you have anything that you'd like to share with us regarding recently applied or imminently available updates? Because I know there have been a couple of teasers in the lead up to, uh, to today's webinar. Um, yeah, I did notice there were some teasers. So, yeah, I had to make sure there was, was something to show as well. Uh, so, yeah, there were, there were three, um, three features that I'm going to demonstrate. Um, three highly requested features, actually. Uh, the, well, the, the first one that you're looking at now, uh, and I will demo after, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, what these uh, features are. Um, first up, the campaign control. And even though from the UI perspective, there's probably not that much to, uh, to look at, uh, but it, uh, it basically will provide uh, users with the ability to uh, pause and unpause campaigns. Um, and that is especially important uh, for people who are using campaigns that have that are only valid for a certain uh, period of time after which uh, the sending more follow-ups is not really uh, sensible in the context of the campaign so you can just uh, pause the campaign and as soon as you pause the campaign uh, Tuxo will no longer send any messages from that campaign and it won't schedule any new activity for the campaign um, and you can, as I say, you can exit it through the, uh, the Ducks dashboard. And once you pause the campaign, what we generally would expect people to do is then go into the uh, into the queued activity and then just purge uh, all the um, yeah all the requests that are still pending, uh, just to make sure that they uh, they are removed before um, uh, you want to maybe reuse the campaign for uh, for for the next uh, event. So that's what. Uh, yeah, well, I would say one of the most highly requested features on the uh, feedback website. Uh, for those who haven't seen, we have this feedback.duxa.com feature request site where you can uh, submit feature requests and vote for vote for once. Um, so then this one had uh, over 40 upvotes, and this has now been uh, delivered. Uh, next up, the tag tool. Um, we couldn't think of a better name than uh, just. Well, name it what it as uh, uh, give it a name so people know that it does what it says on the tin. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Um, and it gives the uh, turbo users the ability to add, remove, edit, search, and export uh, tag lists. So the key requirements here that have been uh, um, filled with this is especially the ability to edit, uh, to rename tags, and to remove tags. And I'll show that how that works uh, up until this uh, updates you needed to actually go into individual profiles to remove tags which obviously is a uh, uh, very time consuming uh, but now you can just yeah remove the, remove them in batch but also you can uh, when you list the tags in this tag tool you can export the list and use that for uh, for your lead gen purposes so was those were the two real functionalities that were people uh, were asking for um, and it says yeah 20 plus upvotes I think it's probably more like 30 plus even if you combine the, uh, the I think it may be because I think we had some some different variations of that request absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully they'll be uh, very well received and then the third one uh, the up until now when you wanted to access the Ducks to dashboard you needed to have the uh, the Ducks extension installed Otherwise, the dashboard, dashboard would not uh, run. Um, and we are going to change that. So now you can actually access the dashboard from anywhere, meaning any browser uh, will work. Uh, so you can run it on your mobile with, with Safari. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's basically access from anywhere. And the, yeah, the key sort of use, case, use cases that we're looking at uh, for people will be, uh, well, be able to use this for is 
it's just monitoring uh, the funnel, uh, being able to qualify uh, prospects in or out of the funnel, also editing campaigns when you've got a, a brainwave, make sure you can go in and just edit the campaign straight away. Um, and also uh, looking at the activity that is being executed, just to keep an eye on the uh, on the uh, on the duck soup, uh, how it's running. So yeah, you can now do this from anywhere, which I think will uh, leave many people as well. So just to um, switch to the oh, let me just move myself out of the way. So the yeah, first off, I'll show you the um, the tag search. So this is a access by the the normal way so just click on search by tag and now this loads in the dashboard as you can see here um and this well this will contain all the tags can, can, you, make that full, can you make that full screen so we can see it a little clearer uh of course that's better a, thank you yeah, great I can also zoom in a bit maybe yeah that's great yeah oh, okay uh so yeah from here you basically like in the older, uh, in, the, in the version that was embedded in the extension, uh, you can just bring up a list. As you can see here as well, we still have the ability to then auto visit these profiles. So that all the functionality is still there. Um, as we know that that is quite used quite quite extensively. Um, from here as well, you can uh, go to manage tags, <clears throat> and this will bring up a list of all the tags that are uh, are in use. Um, and from here you can either rename them or delete them. And for example, I had a tag here that I prepared earlier, um, which could take a misspelling, like here, yeah, here I've got Breda spelled with two A's, which should be with one A. So then you just go in, you remove that, boom, now you're done. And now you'll see that, um, for example, I know that this guy is tagged with that profile, so now when I click here and let this profile load, you'll see <laughs> that straight away this profile has been, uh, well, the tag has been updated. So as you can see here, uh, so this is now the correct tag. So th there is a, yeah, uh, I think that will make a lot of people happy in, in that they no longer have to worry about mistyping tags and all that, uh, all that stuff. Uh, there's also the export function, which, well, just exports the entire list. So not just the profiles you look at, but this. So in this case, all 61 uh, profiles are in this uh, in this file. Okay, so I click on it. Now that will be visible. You might open on a different desktop. Uh, uh, okay, no, I'm going to change that. Okay, um, that was too far off piece, clearly. Right. Let me just continue demoing them uh, so that the, the campaign. As you can see here, we have a test, or sorry, uh, an on uh, indicator. And yeah, as I said before, from a UI perspective, it's not super exciting. You just see the switch off, in this case, the default campaign. You hit save, and now here it says off. So um, yeah, not uh, super fancy, but uh, it is super useful. Yeah, I think as you say there, it's not super fancy, it's super useful for a lot of people. It's just a case of whenever you make any change to a drip campaign, make sure you press the save button. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, that is, it's also uh, done to make sure that, uh, yeah, that you don't accidentally switch off the campaign. So you really hit, have to hit save to, uh, make, yeah, to push that uh, change uh, into, uh, into the settings. Uh, and then finally, I was hoping actually to, um no I, I guess i no so yeah well so the dashboard as it said it's running in chrome but um i could demonstrate it in safari and in firefox but they will look exactly like this without the duckship extension so i suggest people will just try it out uh, so this release is h3o and it will be out tomorrow so you don't have to wait uh much longer to uh to try it out. yeah i i um I tried from my mobile earlier on the test version, and yeah, I was able to see my my funnel from uh, from within my mobile uh, my mobile phone, so I could have a look there at everything that I'd set up. So uh, it's yeah. all there. Yeah, just uh, as and when um, as and when the release is there, just go to your your uh, DuckSoup dashboard, your Ducks Dash uh, from whichever browser or device you want, and you'll be able to uh, have this view, which is uh, as I say, it's, it's difficult to demonstrate because it's just the same view at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it just creates a lot of more possibilities for uh, also for us uh, 
in in delivering features that are potentially just mobile, uh, more mobile focused. Uh, for example, notifications on the mobile. Uh, there's a whole a range of functionality that we can think of um, that yeah that now is possible because we we have detached the uh, the use of the dash from the use of the extension in this way. So okay, um, wait, let me. All right, just uh, we've got a, a question here that uh, I was going to going to raise a second before we move on to the next one. So. Um, it's a, it's a gen, general question that came in um, earlier in the week. And uh, do you have some sort of general tips and advice when using DuckSoup to make sure that you keep your LinkedIn account as safe as possible? Um, how can you minimise the risk of being given a warning, um, or perhaps having your account banned or uh, suspended, or, or even worse, uh, being kicked off completely? Are there any sort of tips and tricks that you can give uh, from a DuckSoup perspective? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, the the biggest trick that I uh, or advice that I always give people is to use the default settings in DuckSoup. Uh, we change the default settings uh, as and when we find it appropriate uh, based on the feedback from the user. So uh, the general the settings, the default settings are there to uh, to keep you safe. Um, and if yeah, so if you're not sure, then just yeah, just use the default settings. Um, another thing that we uh, see is especially when people have a new LinkedIn profiles that they are struggling in getting uh, not so much banned as that they're getting these warnings or they, they get maybe even a temporary ban because they're generating, generating too much activity all of a sudden. Uh, so we do recommend using, um, yeah, uh, what's the word, sort of older profiles that already have some, ex some connections. Aged. Uh, Age, that's the word. Thank you, Charles. Uh, yes, age. No problem. I was, no, I was thinking mature, but it's not the word. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so the age profiles, is, that is definitely key. Um, and if you don't have those, then, yeah, then you would you will want to dial down the settings in DuckSoup uh, because it is the defaults that you find in there are geared towards those sort of profiles. Um, uh, and, yeah, if you need help with those particular settings, uh, well, I would say if you roughly divide by five what you what you find in the defaults in 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 terms of um, connection requests and messages, then you're pretty safe in terms of uh, the limits for um, uh, for new uh, profiles with fewer than 100 connections. Yeah, I, I think as you say there, you know, the key is if you've got a new ca if you've got a new profile, you're starting from scratch or you're relatively new to LinkedIn. Yeah, you've got to start slowly and build things up over a period of time. And it, in, in reality, it doesn't take that long because as, as you get more connections, you get more indirect connections. So you can then really grow your network from there. I think I'd also add to what you say there, there Will, you know, do use the resources that we've made available. We, we update our blog posts and, uh, of course, on our webinar uh, series as well. Uh, any information that we've got with regards uh, user limits or limitations on the platform, we share that with our users accordingly. We've got several blog posts which talk about staying within the limits what to do if you get a warning etc cetera, etc cetera. so so do keep an eye on the website because we we're updating that constantly yeah yeah exactly i mean we've, uh, yeah we've been doing we've been updating uh, the sort of well, our knowledge of the linkedin limits and they change as well uh, over all the um, the seven years that we've been running um and yeah we get a lot, a lot of feedback from uh, from different customers who are looking at different because LinkedIn is always trying uh, out new particular ways of, uh, well, pushing the, the, the users to, to behave in a certain way. And um, uh, we get these notifications from different users across the world that, oh, we're now, we're now seeing this, we're now seeing that. So, uh, yeah, we do get a lot of info in that way in, uh, in where LinkedIn is going as well. I think it's also here worth pointing out, and I think this relates to a question that's coming from Aiden. Um, He's asking about Sales Navigator. Do you require a certain Sales Navigator subscription level in order to use all the DuckSoup Turbo features? Um, I think it's worth pointing out if you have a paid LinkedIn account, you can always do more than if you've got a free account. But from a functionality point of view, you can do everything in Turbo if you've got a free account. You just can do it at a slower pace. I think that's probably a, a good summary, is it, Will? 
Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's the main difference is the uh, absolutely the, the amount of the amount of activity that you can generate in LinkedIn, uh, the paid for paid regular LinkedIn versus uh, SalesNap. Uh, SalesNap just allows you to do more. Um, and the other, well, the benefit that that uh, SalesNap will bring to you is is the uh, yeah the much finer uh, finer filter functions that you have, much more granular search you can do. Um, and if that's important to you, then the, yeah, then the combination and a longer, of the, and a longer list of results as well. As well, yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, twenty-five was it two thousand? Yeah, five hundred versus a thousand, isn't it? Yeah, twenty-five hundred versus a hundred, a thousand. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, um, do you want to go back to your slideshow a second? Do you want to hit the slideshow yes, button sure. um, because? Um, We've looked at the last six months and we've looked at what the, the functions are that, 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 that have been just released or will be released tomorrow or overnight. So looking yeah. forward, what can we hope to see in the medium to long term in the product from a product development point of view? And do we see any uh, significant changes that are going to have an impact? Uh, yeah, well, obviously, uh, we have got a few things in mind. Um, we, we, we can't spill all the beans because, uh, well, we don't want to give away too much uh, to our competitors in the giving them a direction where, where they should be heading so uh, with that in mind uh, this is this is sort of the the, the key uh, the key features that we're looking at and first off is we've had quite a few requests and also we can see just the general direction of linkedin is going that the especially the events but also the company pages are becoming more and more central in uh, in in just in your presence and your outreach on linkedin and uh, we are definitely going to be adding some automations around the key functions uh, with these uh, uh, these LinkedIn features, uh, where they link with uh, with uh, with outreach that you could be doing. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely supporting these new LinkedIn LinkedIn functions will be a uh, thing. Um, next up, that's uh, highly requested on the feedback side, the team functionality, um, and that's really about so when you when you're working in a team and you have a Particular campaign you you were trying to attract uh, prospects for, uh, then uh, at the moment it's quite disjoint. So you need to coordinate uh, between team members on who's targeting uh, which uh, which uh, which prospects on LinkedIn, and we're looking to yeah, basically allow you to bundle that outreach so that you, your your uh, sales development agents don't trip over each other and know what what they're all doing. Uh, then the evolution of the UI as um, well. The UI is obviously um, there, there's a lot of functionality in the in the product that is configurable via the settings, and even though a lot of users appreciate that, uh, not all users, especially not new users, uh, uh, understand those uh, settings or even need to understand those settings. So we're looking to really create um, a, well a simple and a power user uh, UI to uh, to uh, to make those especially the uh, the beginner users uh, give them a, a, a more straightforward experience than uh, they some of them are getting at the moment um a hybrid deployment mode uh we obviously have been getting questions uh, about cloud deployment and uh, even though well we do in DuckSoup think that the way forward for LinkedIn automation will always be to keep it as automation and not uh, not using LinkedIn uh, proprietary APIs to trigger functionality because, uh, well, in my personal opinion, I think LinkedIn will be stamping down on anyone using those APIs uh, really, really, really soon. So, so that's why we definitely think automation is the way forward. Um, and we do think that, especially with mobile, people who are on the road a lot, they, they can't really run DuckSoup uh, locally. So we're looking to have a way of having a mixed deployment model with some local and some uh, cloud deployments. Uh, this, yeah, hopefully this year. Um, Self Spring CRM, it's a highly requested feature by one of our uh, clients, and uh, it's yeah, it's a it's a it's a pretty cool uh, CRM system with. Uh, a lot of automation capabilities, and we'll be adding that next. Um, not in the not uh, too distant uh, future um, is the plan. And we've got a few other native integrations in the pipeline. We've been talking to some other uh, partners or uh, prospect partners that are um, 
uh, that are basically looking for LinkedIn outreach to be uh, included in their product. And uh, yeah, but I, I can't give you any names at the moment. Uh, it's uh, just work is uh, is on the way, and as soon as there is uh, something to announce, then we'll uh, we'll announce it. Watch this space. Excellent. That's uh, that's great. Uh, good to hear. Thanks for that. Um, before we uh, before we move on, just a reminder: if you've got questions for for Will, now's your chance to get them in the in the question box because we're uh, we're approaching that time where we'll, uh, we'll we'll be asking him some questions. Um, I know we've got a bit of a mixture of uh, new and experienced users on the call, so so one of the questions which uh, which does come up quite regularly uh, while while you have the chance to get your questions in, people, um, can you just very concisely explain the differences between pro and turbo for us, uh, Will, because that is a question that does come up quite often. Oh yeah, of course. <clears throat> um, the the well, the main sort of way of, of viewing the difference between pro and turbo is that pro gives you a, a toolbox of automation tools that you can use to uh, to do your activity. So uh, it's like a, a duck soup will provide you with uh, like a semi-automated outreach but you still need to uh, make sure you push all the right buttons and make sure you get the right lists and then uh, trigger activity while in turbo it's really just a fire and forget system so you just uh, you define your uh, your sequences and then you enroll your prospects and that's it then DuckSoup takes care of the rest it's really much more fully automated um, compared to the uh, pro edition so yeah those are that's, that's really the, the key difference between the uh, the two cool thank you jin do we have any questions that you uh, can raise to will um yes uh, i have one um damian is asking um hi will will you have the uh, option to have one contact in only one list to avoid the mistake to have two contacts in different campaigns to um, so you will want to have a prospect to be only be uh, in one campaign at a time. Well, it's actually it's uh, it's been a, uh, yeah. I think uh, the best way forward for that is to uh, to put that request on the feedback.toxup.com website. Uh, the ability to put uh, prospects in multiple campaigns is is, is a conscious design decision, meaning um, customers will have long running or repeating campaigns. Of like newsletters or events, and then there will be short-lived campaigns of uh, maybe a particular product feature. And um, yeah, so in, in, in the way that well, what we've seen uh, from the feedback is that it makes sense to be able to run uh, or to have prospects in multiple campaigns uh, because they will be sending uh, different uh, messages at different times. Uh, but obviously, I can I can see that if yeah, that there is a use case as well where you would want to exclude that but um yeah i think if you put it on the on the feedback side then we can definitely see if that's the sort of thing that other uh, customers are uh, after um so i suggest you do that thank you uh, another question from um user they're asking how did you think of uh duck soup name <laughs> the duck soup name i mean surely the, everyone was known by now no? <laughs> Uh, no, I was kidding. Uh, so the uh, the Duxup name um, is uh, is well, it stems from the the expression uh, "easy as duck soup," which means uh, something that is easy or that seems easy uh, to do. Um, and I'm sure everyone will be googling it now. And you and then the the the, the X in Dux is actually represents uh, Excel because in the well in the olden days of duck soup. Uh, the, the one of the primary use cases was getting data out of LinkedIn into a, into a spreadsheet, uh, and well, Excel is the main uh, spreadsheet application that people use. So uh, yeah, that's why the X is there. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, quite a few users ask, asking if uh, DuckSoup can link with uh, Zapier. Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, I've got some uh, really good news on that. Uh, we already do. So we have a, uh, a Zapier integration in, uh, I, I can probably even spring it up very quickly. Let's say I, I'm sharing my screen anyway. So I just need to make sure 
Yeah, I get that full screen mode. So if you go to um, if you go to sapio.com, you'll see that we have a um, if you go and search for apps. Let's see, there you go. Um, so we have uh, integration with although the most recent API haven't been, hasn't been added yet, uh, all the other ones are in here, and common scenarios, common integrations that uh, make it makes it really super straightforward to uh, yeah to connect the uh, uh, different applications that are available in Zapier uh, with uh, Duxu. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's also worth adding there as well that yeah, in two weeks' time, this is a good good moment to uh, promote it. We'll be demonstrating um, uh, the uh, integration with Make, which is formerly Integram app, uh, similar platform to Zapier. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd mention that one in there in, in answer to that question. You want to go back now because I think there's no. more questions. Come, Will. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Another question would be about uh, in-mails. When will uh, we be able to attach files to in-mail campaigns? It's a highly requested feature. That is a highly requested feature. Uh, yeah, so I would definitely expect it to happen this year. Yeah. Nice. It is, in fact, the uh, well, the attachments uh, is the, the top feature. Uh, we are aware of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's, it's the most requested feature, I think, at the moment. So it's the most upvoted feature. So, yeah, it does have our attention. <laughs> well, thanks for the reminder. <clears throat> Quite a few people asking, um, why is Duxu better than other LinkedIn automation tools? What are the key benefits using Duxu? Well, the, the key benefits of Duxu are really that, that Duxu is built on an, uh, as an automation platform. Um, a lot of the comp competitors are not. Uh, they um, they are in effect either using uh, what they call headless uh, uh, browsers or uh, uh, the LinkedIn uh, the LinkedIn uh, API directly, uh, which is a really uh, slippery slope in uh, in my view. So yeah, Duxbury is different because we are purely automation um, and we have got so many. Uh, safety features built in to make sure that the behavior of Duxup is as human-like as possible to make sure that we don't upset uh, LinkedIn. Now, we've also been working with well, with the LinkedIn platform uh, for many years, so we know uh, really well what uh, what LinkedIn uh, uh, likes and what it doesn't like in terms of uh, sort of integration. And yeah, that's all been uh, taken into account with the, uh, the Duxup platform. So from a safety perspective, it's definitely the best uh, choice. And besides that, uh, you also find that Duxbury is the most feature-rich um, and cost-effective uh, way of running LinkedIn automation that, uh, that exists. So there you go. Thank you. Another question, sorry. Another question would be um, about uh, Current LinkedIn limitations and can Duxu bypass the LinkedIn restrictions uh, on connection requests or LinkedIn limits in general? Um, well, the answer is that, that Duxu could do that, but we choose not to. Uh, we think um, basically uh, trying to work around or work around or break the LinkedIn limits um, is. Yeah, just again, is is not the path that you want to go. Uh, it will lead you into a into an area where you'll be fighting uh, LinkedIn all the time, and you'll be worried about your account being uh, closed all the time, and and rightly so. So so no, we don't. We 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 basically want to automate as much as possible to automate outreach in LinkedIn as uh, complete as we can um, to make sure that people don't have to spend time uh, doing menial stuff in LinkedIn. Uh, but we don't aim to break uh, any of those limitations, even though uh, obviously um, we would have the technical capability. Thank you. Um, another user wants uh, more information on um, DuckSoup uh, default uh, integration safety integration um, is that default auto customize customization based on each user or same default for all 
the, the default uh, settings in TuxSoup are common for all users, but they do get changed over time. As we uh, as LinkedIn changes, uh, then we also change to be for those settings to be in line as much as we uh, uh, yeah as, as we can see. So, but they're always the same for all users. TuxSoup does not automatically decide if your profile is a uh, uh, the, the word that Charles just mentioned. Um, uh, uh, I can't think of the word anymore. Age. Age. Thank you. Age. <laughs> or, <laughs> or young. Uh, I actually know about age because it's like cheese, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so no, we don't distinguish between that. We do distinguish distinguish uh, between the user running uh, different uh, on different versions of LinkedIn. So the default limits will, will be different uh, for visits, for example. Uh, will be higher when you're running on uh, sales nav versus uh, standard linkedin but um uh, so no we, we don't uh, sort of detect the maturity of the or the uh, age of the profile no. thank you um another question from um user um hi there is any uh, do you have any kind of ai for functionality planned in the future for better matching with leads so i presume search a functionality for duck soup um, <clears throat> we are looking at AI uh, but we are looking more for at AI in terms of um, uh, well having auto responses to uh, commonly uh, common responses that we get that you get from prospects like uh, thank you or uh, no thank you that sort of thing uh, in filtering uh, filtering the actual the start of the funnel uh, we really rely on the uh, on on LinkedIn um, or on the manual intervention by the um, by the user, and at the moment we don't have any plans to change that. Thank having you. Said, having said that, though, I was just saying, I mean, it doesn't stop you from, uh, from, for example, implementing that yourself. And I know that, for example, the uh, one of the one of the integration partners, uh, I think White Rabbit, uh, provide functionality like that as well, where they filter. Uh, uh, filter the the start of the funnel uh, based on the um, based on the number of attributes of the uh, of the company and of the data set uh, and they integrate that with uh, with DuckSoup or with LinkedIn in uh, via DuckSoup as well. So, yeah. nice. we have quite a few questions on phone integration. Will DuckSoup work on iPhone or Android? Well, the Ducks dash will, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Ducks dash will, and there will be the. We are looking now that we've uh, made this leap, uh, looking to add more mobile-oriented uh, functionality, meaning uh, functionality that is that takes to account that the the, uh, the user is is on the road or uh, is is commuting or whatever, and is it wants to check progress on uh, what Ducks is doing. Uh, so in in that context, you will you will see uh, functionality appearing, and maybe next year we'll also be looking at doing apps uh, if we find that there is a lot of uh, demand for uh, that sort of functionality. So, uh, but actually doing LinkedIn outreach on your phone that is not something we're considering. Thank you. Um, any more questions there, Jin? um not at the moment cool um oh i see, see one there uh, can we see can we get a price a breakdown of the price points i think that's from jennifer if you have a look on our website on our home page you can see all the pricing information there uh regarding pro and turbo plans and then also all of the um the single license uh pricing and the team and agency pricing as well and uh as if on queue there it appears uh on the screen there hopefully you can see all of that you see the individual team and agency licensing plans uh there uh hopefully that is uh is good enough for you uh, just um, to just to quickly add to that um so what is a uh, key and what might not be known to uh or of the problem is that the, our team plans that we have here which are multi uh, c plans they have uh, tiered pricing so the more users you get on board uh, the cheaper the seat gets per user at least for those new users up to 50 percent uh, so that's one thing to uh to 
No, and also the agency model uh, has metered billing, uh, so with a minimum of 10 seats, you it's a uh, it's a well you pay uh, basically at the end of the month you pay for the number of seats you used for that month, uh, which especially for agencies means that uh, it makes it easy to uh, to just start using DuckSoup and implementing lead gen for the clients uh, without having to commit to a large upfront investment or to a number of seats via the team plan. Uh, it's it's our most flexible plan uh, uh, and also the uh, most um, well competitive one uh, looking at the competition, I would say. Cool. And I just see a, a question from Steve, I think it is. You, yeah. In order to, to benefit from any of the integrations, in order to have access to the API, yeah, you need uh, to have Turbo, uh, just as a clarification there as well. Yeah, Jim, absolutely. do you have any further questions? I think that's okay, a no. questions, yeah, from your side. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Right. I think, uh, yeah, we, uh, we've we've had a, a really good insight there. So it just leaves me to say thanks to all of our users who've raised quest raised questions and contributed to the discussion today. I think it's uh, hopefully uh, useful, and uh, these insights will uh, will be a benefit to everybody going forward. And also thank you to Jin for monitoring uh, the questions, and of course, lastly to uh, to Will for sharing his insights with the uh, with the DuckSoup community today. I've already mentioned it, but I'll mention it again. So in two weeks' time, I'm going to be doing uh, a webinar on how DuckSoup works with Make, um, demonstrating you how you can make the most of the uh, the DuckSoup integration there with some real life examples uh, as to how that's being used. Um, and another little reminder, uh, if you need help with your DuckSoup setup or solution, you can contact our support team, whose details are there at the bottom of this page, the email address, the, the, the website there. But if you need more consultative uh, assistance you can also book either a, a booster call or a technical call through our website as well um so that's all available uh, via our usual channels and i will just hand over to to gin uh, to close the webinar and i'll speak to everybody in two weeks time cool thank you everyone for joining um us today thank you will thank you giles and um, if you have any further questions, please go to DuckSoup website. There's a live chat box, or you can always email us, and we will be happy to um, help you further. Uh, have a lovely day or evening, and see you later. Thanks. Thank you.